Wonderful. Well, welcome everybody um, to the first annual Sister Schools Abroad Conference um, here at the University of Chicago. We're so thrilled to see everybody come out today on this snowy, uh, blustery Chicago day. Um, so thank you for making it. And I think we have a wonderful program ahead of you today. So um, before um, I speak and I frame the day, my name is Robert Davis. Um, I'm the Director of World Language and International Studies Programs in the Chicago Public Schools Office of Language and Culture Education. And we have some wonderful guest speakers here here today who are going to welcome us. Um, first, I'd like to invite um, um, Evelyn Tennant, who is the Associate Director of the University of Chicago Center for International Studies. Please um, help me in welcoming her. Thank you and good morning. I'm very pleased to be able to welcome all of you on behalf of the University of Chicago Center for International Studies and International House. Um, to today's important Sister City Schools workshop. Um, I'd like now to introduce Eileen Hubble, Director of the Mayor's Office of International Relations. And again, welcome. Thank you, Evelyn. To our educators and principals who've joined us this morning, to the representatives and shares from our Chicago Sister Cities, to our partners at Chicago Public Schools, and to our hosts at the University of Chicago, good morning. On behalf of Mayor Richard M. Daley and the city of Chicago, I am so pleased to welcome all of you to the first annual Sister Schools Abroad Conference. As you know, the mayor's vision for the city is a global vision, and he believes that education is the key to the future of our city. In today's increasingly global society, it is critical for our young people to continue to forge new bonds with their counterparts around the world in order to ensure that they gain the perspective and understanding that will allow them to be active players in the global future of tomorrow. The Chicago Sister Schools program plays a central role in bringing an international experience and perspective to our students and the lessons they learn as Chicago's ambassadors to the world are ones that will shape the global citizens they become. On behalf of the mayor, please know how important your commitment to the Sister Cities program is to his vision for the future of our city and how much we value your time this morning and the energy and spirit you bring to make this program flourish at your schools. I would also like to thank very warmly all of those who have worked so hard to make this conference possible. I'd like to thank the University of Chicago Center for International Studies, the International House, the Chicago Public Schools Office of Language and Cultural Education, and the Office of Academic Enhancement. And of course, I'd like to thank and really salute the Chicago Sister Cities International Program for their hard work and their commitment to making Chicago a better place for us all to live, work, and raise our families. At this time, I'd like to introduce you to the Acting Executive Director of the Chicago Sister Cities International Program, Mr. Leroy Ayala. Thank you, Eileen. Uh, on behalf of our Board of Directors of the Chicago Sister Cities International Program, I'd like to welcome you all again. Um, I'd like to first off thank Chicago Public Schools and the Mayor's Office of International Relations for collaborating with Sister Cities uh, to put this program together. Um, thank you also again to the University of Chicago for generously offering to host uh, today's program and the International House here at the University. Um, we do hope to make this an annual event. Um, also, I wanted to, to give a special thank you to all of the staff of all of our organizations that worked hard to, to bring us all together today. Uh, in particular, Gregory Smith and Betsy Schwartz um, for their, their hard work and, and dedication to making today's event possible. So. Uh, I'm, I'm pleased to also see a number of our Sister City Committee chairs and our Education Subcommittee uh, chairs present as well today. Um, I believe we have over 19 of our 27 Sister Cities represented here through, um, through our volunteers of our chairs and, and co-chairs. Um, so I, I'd like to ask them to, to please stand so we can see uh, all of you present today. So thank you. 
In particular, I'd also like to recognize um, from our, our chairs who also serve on our board of directors, uh, Marilyn Diamond and Janet Murphy, who are our co-chairs of our Casablanca committee, uh, Christoph Lichtenfeld, our vice chair of the Hamburg committee, uh, Dr. Tariq Butt, our co-chair for the Lahore Committee, and Billy Lawless, our vice chair for our Galway Committee. So thank you again for, for your dedication and for being here with us today. Uh, we're particularly proud of the Sister Schools Abroad Program, which is now in more than 40 Chicago schools. In a very tangible yet simple way, the Sister Schools Abroad Program has been able to successfully co connect thousands of students from around the world, opening their lives to international languages, cultures, customs, and friends. Because of the program's success, Chicago Sister Cities was awarded uh, earlier this year in Kansas City the uh, Innovation Award for Youth and Education by our Sister Cities International uh, program. Uh, again, it is uh, with great pleasure that I welcome you all here today. I'm proud to be part of this great education initiative. Uh, it is my hope that all of us walk away today with some good ideas and how to forge new international paths within our schools, and I truly look forward to making the next steps together. Uh, at this time, I'd like to ask Dr. Barbara Easton Watkins, uh, Chief Education Officer at Chicago Public Schools, to say a few words. Uh, Barbara is a, a true visionary. I think many of you know her, and she has also worked uh, very hard and uh, been uh, instrumental in making today's event possible. So, welcome. Good morning. Good morning. I am truly thrilled to be here and, and so inspired to see so many of you here to share in this really wonderful, wonderful event. And I too want to take a few moments to recognize some individuals who have really worked significantly over the past few weeks to make sure that this came to fruition. Uh, first of all, let's give another round of applause to Bob Davis, who has really, really pushed the envelope on international education for the Chicago Public Schools. Uh, I'd also like to give a special thanks as well to the University of Chicago's International House for allowing us to be here today, uh, recognizing several departments from the Chicago Public Schools. And if you're represented here, please stand. The Office of Academic Enhancement under the leadership of Abigail Joseph, the Office of Language and Culture under Diane Zendejas, uh, and David Roach is here as well from the Office of Fine Arts. Would you please stand or just, uh, David, you don't have to stand. Just let us know that you're here. We've also received uh, considerable leadership and support from the mayor's office. And Eileen, I'd like to give a special thanks to you for really working with us as well. And a real thanks to you for joining us and really helping us as we move forward with this you know, important initiative. Uh, we're really thrilled today that we have someone who's here from one of our sister cities, and I'd like to have her stand at this time. Anika Malbride, would you please stand? She is the rector of the Swarsdale Skolan School in Gothenburg, Sweden, and this is one of Chicago's sister city, and we will have an opportunity to hear from the students from her school, the choir, the elevator choir, will actually perform for us later this morning. And what really, really inspires me today are the principal leaders who are here. Because we know that we will not become the international education mecca if we, we don't have the support of each and every one of you. And as I look out in the audience, I see so many prominent principal leaders here. Please stand. Because I deeply, deeply appreciate all of you. And I should note that uh, Ted Johnson, who is sitting next to Anika, is actually serving as the host school because she's actually visiting the Volta School. Just know that the Chicago Public Schools is, is really committed to international education. We recognize the importance to our students. We want to ensure that Chicago becomes a world-class city, and we know that we can only do this if we are providing the meaningful experiences. I think that today's dialogue and today's conferences is just a wonderful first step for us, and we'll continue the dialogue. There's some great things that are happening in the Chicago Public Schools. This will enable us to begin to showcase this effort, and on behalf as well of the Sister Cities effort, 
thank you so much for really pulling this together. And we look forward for our continued support from you, Leroy, because this is what we're really trying to do, ensure that our students are globally competitive, that they get the skills that are required, and that we're sharing this information across the city. Thank you so much. It just warms my heart to see all of you here today. Have a wonderful, wonderful conference. Thank you. Well, wonderful. Thank you, everybody. And um, now we're going to get into um, the, sort of the goals of the day, tell you a little bit about the background of why we're having this conference and what we might achieve by coming together. Um, we have a little PowerPoint presentation, and um, we'll go through that. But also, I really want to point out before we start that this is a dialogue that goes beyond today. This is something that we need to be talking about throughout the school year, in the summer, during planning, to see what we can do to increase international education opportunities for our students and our teachers in Chicago public schools and beyond. Next slide, please. So um, who, where are Chicago's sister cities? I think many of you may have a general idea. Um, this is the big list. We could always get that to you. But it, what's interesting about our, our, the, our sister cities is they really represent a huge diversity of locations throughout the world. And for us in education, I think that also represents a wonderful opportunity to bring in multiple viewpoints from throughout the globe. Next slide, please. Which CPS schools are in the program? It's a big list. I'm certainly not going to read it. Um, but this, the, some of these schools have been in longer than others. Some of the schools are really doing a lot. They're super active. Others are new into the program. They're learning, figuring out what to do. So um, we're all here today to discuss this with each other and really to learn from each other. Um, one of the things that we're, we're stressing today is using models, examples of what's working in the school to show each other what might be a great thing to take back into your school after today. Next slide, please. So the genesis of today's conference. There's a common understanding in that in order for Chicago to be a truly international city, then we have to foster international citizens both in the classroom and in the city's many outstanding institutions. So, you know, we all know that the, the, world, the, the, the classroom is just part of what we're doing every day and that the museums, that our cultural organizations are, are a true gift. I mean, that's why it's great to live in a major city. So we have... Um, different resource representatives who are going to be here today to share with you, to talk about that, and, and to hopefully inspire you. We have a team of players from several organizations that came together to discuss how to energize the program. We introduced the organizations. And this was something very unique, to have all these people from different departments, different offices, different parts of the city branches come together and think, what can we do for our kids right now, starting today, to really make Chicago the premier international city? We, um, a team of, um, of staff visited um, the participating schools to hear about successes and concerns, led by Gregory Smith, who is in the back there. Um, and and we, what we did is we spent time in the schools talking to you about what's working, what, what isn't working, what's, what are the issues, what are the successes, so that we, can, we had some uh, starting point to be able to present to you. We understand that there are some schools that have been involved in the program for a long time but haven't done a lot. We understand that some schools are brand new and done a ton. So we are trying to figure out what makes a successful partnership? And that's what we've brought to you today. We've identified, identified resources and models to share with you today and to, to sort of demonstrate this is what's working, what's not. The other thing I want to say is the schools that had us come and visit, thank you so much for taking the time to do that. I know that you're all very busy and you know, you've got a lot on your plate. A lot of this was in the spring and the summer even, and you all took time to do that. So thank you for having us there. And our challenge, how can we connect the classroom to the world? And not just say that we're doing that. How can we actually do this? What can we do? How can this be in all parts of our curriculum at the school and really reflect the culture of your school? Next slide. So we heard you. We heard your commonly expressed concerns in, from the participating schools. And these are the big ones that we, we saw again and again. One, it's difficult to identify the contact person at the school abroad and to maintain communication with the partner school. You're all ready to do it, but nobody's answering the phone. On the other side, there's no, the emails aren't coming back, the faxes. And that's something that we can do to help. We can facilitate those, that communication to make sure that we know that you are talking to the right person. The lack of funds to support travel, purchasing necessary technology, hosting visiting schools, of course, we all understand that. There's, there's never enough money to do all the things we have to do. So one of the things we're talking about today is creative ways to address some of these issues without looking for a lot of funding, which isn't there. There's a little time for teacher liaison to run the program and to conduct day-to-day -day classes. It's like teachers have enough to do, right? And now they have to create an international program at the school. What we're going to talk about today is how can this be infused in the curriculum? It's not plus this. This is this. This is part of the curriculum. This should be in there every single day. 
You're, it's not just you doing this. It should be at the school, and you should figure out creative ways that reflect your school on how to implement this program. There's no one right way. It's the right way is the way that's going to work best for your school and your partner's school. Um, technology limitations, the lack of technology, or certain programs are restricted in schools. Some schools can't use Skype or other free messaging programs. How can we get past this? This is not a big problem. This is something that if it's a common concern, we should be able to move forward. Te communication should not be the, you know, we, we need to be able to talk with each other. None of us can work with um, international partners without constant communication. And technology, frankly, is the easiest way to do that. Time zone differences between Chicago and sister cities. We don't have a solution for this problem. Um, it's, but we can, we can talk about how schools have dealt with this. Um, you know, we, we're trying hard, but that one that we can't address. Um, but we can talk about how schools have overcome this. And um, need suggestions on how to move forward and models of what successful collaborations look like. So a lot of schools are saying, we're ready. We want to do this, but we just don't really know what step one is. Can you show us an example of what's working and tell us why that worked? And that's what we're here to do today. Next slide, please. So we've come up with what we call the anatomy of a successful sister school partnership. And this is, what, this is our first step suggestions of what you might do in your schools to move forward and with us there supporting you and giving you the tools to do so. What does it take to build a successful sister school collaboration with your international partner school? What are the steps? Um, the, your, does your program reflect the goals and culture of your school? This isn't something that because school A did it, it's going to work in school B. It has to be, you have to own it. This has to be your, about your school doing something that's for your kids and your partner school. And the team has identified four major areas which are essential in successful implementation, which I'm going to walk through right now. Um, next slide, please. The first, the first one is focus and clarity. You need to know what you're doing before you can do something, right? And you think this is a great idea, it's going to be really fun, and then all of a sudden it's May, and you're thinking, wow, we didn't really get around to it this year. What we're suggesting is focus and clarity. Choose one project and go with it. If it works, that's fantastic. You build of it. If it doesn't, you tweak it. Um, before the school year begins, communicate with your partner school to identify an ongoing project which mutually benefits both schools. We're suggesting that project-based programs are the strongest model in Chicago public schools, where there's something that your school is doing and that your partner school is doing, and you share that, the results of that, whether it be science, math, technology, arts. That's up to you, but it's something that both schools are engaged in. Identify the goals and outcomes of the project. How will this enhance your overall curriculum of the school? Does it, does it reflect in your SIPA goals? The, you know, these are things you need to talk about before moving forward. Is the project something that will inspire children? Is this, you may think it's really great. Is, are your kids going to think so? Is this something that they are going to be engaged in every step of the way? Identify key contact teachers who will facilitate in the program. And create a, lifeline for, a timeline for the projects. When will the project begin? When are you going to talk about it? When you guys are going to get back together with your partner schools? And when is the project going to be completed? The timeline will really help you stay on track, set the goals in the very beginning, and then you can, your communication will be guided by this timeline. Next slide, please. Frequent and substantive communication. Establish a communication protocol. How, how will you communicate? Who is going to be involved? When will it take place? What will be discussed? So one thing that we find is really hard is when you guys are faxing back and forth to each other, because you never know when the fax is going to come, et cetera. Email is another way you can do this, but what, the best way we found is that when people are able to see each other face-to-face -face or talk to each other on the telephone real time, because then you have a real human connection with the person at your sister school. Schools should be communicating with each other at least once per month, not um, you know, September and then May which happens a lot of times, I understand. Um, they, once a month, scheduled, you know when to expect it, you know what the, is on the agenda. Just like any other meeting you might have, but this is something that it happens to be with an international partner. Stick to the schedule, don't fall behind. This is so often the reason why programs become, it, become inactive. Keep the momentum going. If it really worked great this year, make sure it's going forward into the next year. You know, don't wait, because this is something that the momentum is really going to drive the results in your school. Communicate with colleagues in your own school. Let them know what is happening and how they can get involved. Share with parents. This is not one teacher in the school who's doing this. This should be something that all the teachers are aware of. If they want to be part of it, welcome them. And also, I think parents are a wonderful resource that we often don't look to. That have, they may have international experience that they want to share or just time and excitement that they want to bring into the school. Let them. Let them be part of this international program. Next slide, please. Teamwork and collaboration. This is not a team of one in the school. And so often it's become that, where I'm the sister school liaison, right? And I, the, it's all on me to make this school-wide project work. Those days are over. This, is a, this needs to be a teamwork-focused project, where there's a number of people on the staff who are involved in this project and who are contributing every year. 
During the planning stages, build your team and identify clear roles and goals for each member. The program should um, should offer reflect something at the school. Get your colleagues involved. So again, like I keep saying, it it needs to be about your school and about your kids. It's not something that we say now you will do a technology project. Well, if your school's not really into technology or that's not your focus, then that's not going to work. Find out what's going to work. Let us know, and we'll be there to provide the tools and assist you to be successful in this program. Engage parents. Encourage international perspectives at home as well in the classroom. And look to CPS and sister cities for the support and to help identify resources. If you have a great idea, let us know. We'll do what we can help. We'll do what we can to help you identify those resources. Um, there's not a big pool of money called sister cities, and then we're all like, when those rec- when those project comes, we'll let it go. Really, what it is is we look at Chicago as the resource, and we'll say, you know, that is an exciting project. Have you met this person? Try to connect to the different resources in the city to see what we can do to support that. Also, all of our sister cities have wonderful um, committees that are there. They're volunteers. They're there to do just that, to support the projects that are happening in all aspects of the sister cities program. Next slide, please. The dreaded assessment word. Um, assessment, growth, and ad- 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 adaptability. Um, we're not saying that we need, you know, you need to be doing huge reports on this, and there's no testing involved, thankfully, on um, this one. I think the true test is going to see, you know, what happens after this program with the kids. What, how have you changed them? What are their perspectives? Ask yourself, did this work? How can we adapt this to make it work better? Did the students enjoy and learn from it? So often we hear, well, this is what we've always done, right? This is what we've always done. But maybe not, that's not what we always should have done or what we always could have done. So this might be a good opportunity to really look at the projects you're doing and think, well, maybe this is time to breathe some new life into it. Or maybe it's working and we're moving forward and using that as a foundation. Communicate with your partner school. How can we tweak this to make it work better for the future? What can we do to make it even stronger? How can we involve more kids, more class levels, more grade levels, more teachers? Um, should we do this project again or should we try something different? Um, also, re- make sure to ask them what they want to do, right? I mean, it's two schools involved here. They may come to you with a fantastic idea. Listen, you know, it has to be a dialogue between both, um, both cities, both schools, both countries. Don't be afraid to add something new. Bring in new ideas, add more grade levels, change it up a bit. Successful partnerships are always in the state of growth. So, and it's just like any relationship we're in, it always has to be growing, and that's the same with your, your sister school's relationship. Often staff will change. As you know, principals change. Um, Liaisons change. Contact people change. So we have to make sure that we're on top of that. And as those changes take place, that we are involved in it, we know what's happening, and we're fostering that relationship so it can continue to move forward. Um, Don't wait a year to find out your new liaison, even if if they don't respond. If you're you're contacting your sister school and you're hearing nothing, call us, and we will put in some calls as well. I think that with all the resources that we have here, we can definitely ensure that you have a strong partnership abroad. Next slide, please. And I spoke a little bit about this. Chicago is a city of resources. This is why we live in a city. This is why we've chosen to be here, is that we have all these amazing resources around us. We also have um, a mayor who supports this program, which is fantastic, who kind of gets that the, in order for Chicago to be a truly relevant city, it has to be a, an international city with an international focus. Think globally when you're thinking about your programs but explore locally. We have tons of resources available in the city of Chicago. We have people who are excited to share their experience. We have people who have lived in the countries of your sister school who want to talk about it with students. We have companies that work there all the time. Think big. Um, one thing that Dr. Easton Watkins is telling me whenever I see her is, you need to think bigger. How can we make this bigger? How can you make this more exciting? And I think that that is the challenge for all of us. How can we do this? What can we do to make this really, really outstanding and something very special that's going to change these kids' lives? Um, and clear program with tangible, um, what cultural, educational, and financial resources might be available, and the clear programs with tangible results are attractive to partner organizations. If you go to a partner organization and say, we have a sister school and we think it's really cool and we want to do something, they're going to say to you, what would you like to do? And then you say, ooh, I don't know, let me get back to you. So when you have those programs light up, and that's part of the planning stage, when you know what you want to do, you know the steps to achieve this, then you go to your partner organizations, and they can provide the resources that will fill in that project. But don't look to partner organizations to tell you what you're doing in your school, because you know what's best, what's going to happen in the school for sure. They're just there to enhance what that might be. Next slide, please. That having been said, um, 
let's talk a little bit about today's agenda, because it's interesting. We're here in the University of Chicago, um, and so we're not in a CPS school, which is sort of nice to get out and be someplace different. And we are going to have, um, we're, as you know, you're all in different groups. We have the red, yellow, and blue group. And we would like for you to stay in your groups today. I know that some of you have been broken up with your colleagues from the school. That's an exciting opportunity for you to meet new people. You will be moving around today. Um, we have three workshops being presented three times. So the, the presenters will stay put in the different rooms, and then you will travel to those rooms with breaks in between. You'll know um, where to go because you follow your schedule. If you have a red schedule, follow your red schedule. Don't look at your party, the person next to you and follow their schedule because it may not be the same as yours. Um, everybody's going to different areas. We also have staff throughout the, um, the building who can guide you and help you along the way. Participants will visit all three workshops, as I said. Follow the schedule provided. Lunch and resource exhibition from 11.50 to 1 p.m. back here. Okay, so while we have lunch today, we're asking you to also look at all these tables on the side. We're going to have different um, resources available that are, we've invited to come into just to talk about ways to enhance your program at your school. Different opportunities. So talk to them and see what it might fit because um, we think that they're really an exciting group of people that we brought together today and we're so pleased to have them. So make sure you have something to eat, but after you eat, make sure you talk and, and, and explore what might be here. And from 2 to 2.50, um, then we'll have uh, more sessions in the afternoon. And then 2 to 2.50, we're going to come back here again for a brief presentation from Chicago 26. Um, we have special guest performance from Sweden of our, our choir that's going to sing for us. Um, and we also have an evaluation and just final closing remarks for the day. Next slide, please. And before we, we've, I let you go and we, we start the day, I want you to already start thinking about next steps. How are we going to move forward from here today? What should you be looking for? We really want you to take the ideas and the inspiration from today and bring them back into your school and, 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 and talk about it. Identify a school-based team which will work on the program. Look at school planning and goals. Where can this fit and enhance the mission of the school? Be creative and tie the program into your school curriculum. I can't stress this enough. It has to be curriculum-based. This is not an after-school program. This is not a holiday music program. This is a curriculum-based international education experience in your school. Consider sustainability and long-term collaboration. Identify suggestions for projects. Share with your partner school. Identify obstacles. Communicate with CPS and sister cities, because we will help. CPS will offer a follow-up PD on specific topics, which we'll share with schools via email. Please come. So what this is is that you know, we all have professional development days throughout the year. As part of the Sister Schools Abroad program now, we are going to be offering year-round professional development on international education opportunities. This is sort of our big kickoff, and the other ones will be more focused with specific presenters who talk address specific issues, technology, arts implementation, different projects that we identify that may be a good project to use with you and your sister school abroad. And share successes and think big. We want to hear from you. If, you're, if something's working, please tell us, because we want to be able to share that information with the other schools as an example, just like we're doing today. We, we have a lot of ideas what might work. We have a lot of resources to bring to you, but ultimately the schools know what is best for your school, for your students, and for your teachers. And we want to hear what's working. Next slide, please. So thank you very much to everybody. Um, I know there's been lots of thank yous already. Um, the presenters and resources, um, everybody who came today, um, the staff from the different departments. I know personally um, the staff who I work with in the World Language International Studies Unit and Language Culture has been so tremendous. So thank you again, everybody. Um, the Sister Cities Committee representatives, the academic enhancement team has been just outstanding, University of Chicago, CPS teachers and principals who are here today, and everyone who supports um, these programs. I mean, and that's, you know, it's interesting to see. I've been working in this program for in international studies for about nine years in CPS, and every year there's more people at the table. There's more people who are excited to, to contribute to this. So it's really thrilling. So thank you all very much. Before I say, I send you off into your workshops, there's one other person I would like to recognize today who has been... Um, She's been the one constant, really, in my time at Chicago Public Schools, um, working in the Sister Schools Abroad program, um, Betsy Schwartz. And Betsy is um, Betsy's actually, she is, um, she's, she's retiring, and I say that with quotations. Betsy, please come on up here. Um, um, she is retiring, though I don't, I'll believe it when I see it, because um, she's, she's one of the hardest working people I've ever met. And um, she has been really the person who has put these programs together, made the Sister Schools Abroad program be what it is. So everybody, again, if we can join me in um, applauding Betsy for her contribution. <laughs>